All right, shifting focus to another story we are tracking here on Beyond Dispatch. In a huge setback for former finance minister P. Chidambaram, India's top court has refused to listen to his plea. The case will now be heard on Friday. The day started with Chidambaram's lawyers approaching Justice Ramana's court to hear an interim bail plea. But Judge Ramana directed them to the court of the Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gogoi. And the plea has been left in the lurch by the end of the day as it could not be mentioned before Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi. Chidambaram's lawyers wanted an urgent hearing of the case, but the listing can only be done by the Chief Justice. Remember, the Central Bureau of Investigation has already issued a lookout notice for Chidambaram. The High Court had said yesterday that Chidambaram seems to be the kingpin and a key conspirator in the case and needs to be interrogated in custody in order for the investigation to be effective. Now, Chidambaram has been missing since then. He's facing arrest in what is dubbed the INX media case, in which he's accused of facilitating foreign investment in a media company as the finance minister in the Congress-led UPA government, at the instance of his son Karthi, who allegedly received kickbacks for his role in it. For more on this story, I'm now joined by my colleague Karthik Sharma. Karthik, good evening to you. Now, options running off of Chidambaram, would you say? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's unprecedented that a sit, you know, former union finance minister, former union home minister, is absconding for more than 24 hours in a case of corruption. Uh, and, I, in, you know, I, he, not only being rebuffed thrice, but the lawyers had to, you know, they were fighting in the re registrar's office so that the matter could be listed for urgent hearing. So there were unprecedented scenes uh, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Supreme Court. And I would say that it also reflects a sort of a culture of entitlement and, you know, and a VVIP culture where important people expect that, you know, their issues would be addressed for in the Supreme Court or any other uh, arm of the executive of the government. But in this case, I think Ranjan Gogoi took a very uh, a strong position. First, he denied urgent hearing. Second, he wanted the defects in the plea to be addressed. Uh, thirdly, he wanted the list the issue to be mentioned in the list and fourth uh, justice ramana also took a very principled position that you can just you cannot barge inside a courtroom and say listen to our matter so i think going by the verdict of the high court which was given yesterday and the sort of uh, uh, the way supreme court has dealt uh, with chidambaram's lawyer is a clear statement that judiciary uh, will not be browbeaten by important lawyers and Karthake, what kind of precedent might this set for similar high-profile cases in uh, pending in India as we speak? And uh, this is as much political as it is legal, isn't it? It's both political and legal. The fact of the matter is that uh, you know Chid Chidambaram is a high-profile uh, uh, was a high-profile minister. But then you know things have changed for him because Indrani Mukherjee became an approver. That's a different case. Without g g getting into the detail, it not only implicates P. Chidambaram, but there's evidence against Karthi Chidambaram. Yes, you know le legal nitty can differ that the Karthi got Karthi Chidambaram gets the bail in the same uh, case, but P. Chidambaram is not. But look at the charges. FIPP uh, norms were pretty much regulated, and if you look at what has happened between 2007 and 8, the Aircel Maxis case and INX media case, a clear example of crony capitalism and the way rules were bent uh, to help few people in which Karthi was involved. So I think uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a case whereby law has finally caught up. All right, Karthi K. Sharma in Delhi, thank you for that update.